What's happening, you handsome SOB? Sal Mike back again with another fix your form video. If you want to get involved, email three reps at 70% to ask M I K K E at gmail.com. I'm here to coach you all up, help you out, hopefully, learn a thing or three about some lifting and fix your form. We got some conventional deadlifts starting off the party. First off, this gym looks kind of dope. Uh, don't know where you are, but all Alico stuff, bunch of racks. Overall, my man. Form is looking A1, if I do say so myself. Um, back looks really flat. Hips are in a pretty dang good position. Uh, I think we're going slow-mo here, so extra, extra, extra slow-mo. Uh, looks like you get good tension in your hamstrings. Pull the slack out of the bar, and it looks like you keep it really close. Um, a front angle may help. I don't know if we're going to get one, but uh, just focus on flexing your lats and stomach as hard as you can and making sure that bar is in contact with you the entire time. Um, otherwise, I really don't got much of a fix. You can try if you want to experiment with a slightly higher chin and eye position. It may feel a little bit better. Um, but overall, to be honest, not a whole lot to fix. It looks really, really, really good. Moving on to the next one. What do we got? More conventional deadlifts. Everybody's trying to build that booty. Hashtag Peach King. Hashtag Peach Gang. You guys know what it is. So another actually pretty cool looking gym. Uh, looks like we got some conventional deadlifts, as I previously mentioned. Let's see what we got. Overall, really, really solid, man. Uh, I say you rush in that second rep uh, just a little bit. Make sure that you're really breathing, breathing and bracing in that back and almost trying to think about falling backwards a little bit. So once you get that midline uh, with your lats and your stomach real rigid from your hip to your chin, oh, hip to your shoulder, what am I talking about? From your hip to your shoulder, really, really rigid. Let's almost get you a little bit of a teeter-totter effect. I did this in a previous video, if you guys want to check back, about a week ago, about a week ago, week ago, that you want to get that as rigid as you can. Get your momentum falling backwards just a little bit. You want to push into your hips. That means not hips downwards, but hips backwards, almost to that wall behind you. Falling back just slightly will get a little bit more tension in those hamstrings. Get your body weight behind the barbell just a little bit more. Uh, and that not only will protect your back a hair, uh, but it also allow for proper bar path uh, and also tension, not only through the bar, but in the proper muscles. We want to keep tension in our hamstrings, low back, glutes through the entire repetition from start to finish. Um, right now, overall, pretty dang solid. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much. I'm not a huge fan of facing into the mirror. Uh, if you want to face away just to get more body awareness uh, and then also maybe chin down just a hair, my friend. It's a conventional pull and party, guys. Let's see what we got here. Shoes off in the in the commercial gym. I like it. Nice and gross. Hopefully you don't get staff infection. Conf, uh, ooh, ooh, ah, ooh. Staff infection. Com, uh, normal gyms are absolutely disgusting. All right, not too bad. So what I think we can do here uh, is one, get your chin up, eyes up, just a hair. Another thing is as you're uh, lined up on the bar, I want you to take maybe half an inch step backwards away from the bar. And that's going to allow you to bend your knees just a little bit more and get those hips down a hair. Now I know I talk a lot about People's hips being too low and squatting the weight up, but in your case, your hips are a little too high in my opinion. Now, generally speaking, we want to get our hips just below our shoulders, and in this case, you're putting a lot of that load in your low back uh, and, and hinging off your low back. If you bend your knees just a hair, hips down just a hair, remember to flex your middle, breathe into your stomach, sides, and low back, as well as flexing your lats, pulling that bar into you, and then allowing your knees just to travel forward a little bit more. Uh, will allow those hips lower and to hinge on your hips rather than your low back, my friend. It really is a conventional pull and party. Uh, this gentleman does a really good job of it. You can see him kind of push into the hamstrings on that first rep. Knees are forward just a hair, getting the quads off the ground, and then finishing the rep. Now, some people's hips will be higher and look higher than others, but that's mostly based on uh, thigh length, femur length, and then the length of their torso. Um, will be... Uh, pretty much make up your mind for you where you're going to pull. Uh, the only other thing is that I've talked about in a couple videos is I'm not a huge fan of touch and go deadlifts uh, for majority of people. Um, one, I think you're going to lose a lot of the tension and the work in the bottom half because even if you're trying to be careful, the weights are going to bounce and you're going to uh, not have to control the weight on the first couple inches. Momentum obviously will do it, especially with a bumper plate or something like that. Two, I think that it's not as controlled or repeatable and powerlifting although very basic an idea uh, the execution of it can be quite complex where we want to make as many variables go away 
and everything is repetitive as possible. We want to be able to repeat the process over and over and over. And with touch and goes, often people will just get loose and the second, third, fourth, whatever amount of reps you do after your first will be so different than the original. Moving on to the next one. It really is a conventional pull and party and I'm loving it. Overall, it looks pretty dang solid, my friend, especially that rep right there. The first rep, it looked like you just got a hair out of position that the bar came forward on you, you may need your hips up just a hair higher. Um, sometimes when your knees move too far forward beyond the issue of squatting the weight up and not having tension in your hamstrings and glutes, which I've talked about in many videos, another issue is the bar path. If our knees are too far forward, we're going to have to get our knees out of the way or move the barbell out of our uh, the way of our knees. Either way, we're going to either have a funky bar path or we're going to have to lock our knees before our hips and then our weight's going to be too far forward and under maximal weights or even semi-maximal weights, you know, 75, 80, 85%, uh, that bar will tug us forward. That's one of the main differences uh, between kind of the pull in weightlifting, like a clean or even a snatch, and the pull in powerlifting. Uh, weightlifting, you want to be in front of the bar a little bit as you bring it into your knees. Now, maybe not even a little bit. You want to be in front of the bar a lot of it. In powerlifting, we want to keep uh, the 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 perspective of where our shoulders are to the bar the same if not more behind the bar as we progressively lift the bar and finally we got some cheaters in here ladies and gentlemen the sumo deadlift uh, from this angle my man it actually looks really really good and I'm not just talking about your triceps I'm talking about your general technique going beltless here like my man Konstantin Konstantinov um, although you set up a little bit from the bottom and there may be a little bit too much arc in your low back a little bit overextended um, I would try to either, one, bring those ribs down and really brace into that stomach, or two, drop that chin just a hair, but overall, uh, really, really clean sumo. What do we got? Mao conventional. So even right here is another uh, decent example. One, I think a flatter shoe will always uh, do you a little bit better, but two, you do have a little bit longer of a torso, although you are too far in front of the bar still. So I'd like to see those hips a hair higher but even a, a bit further back. And that's why you're kind of getting the issue of a slight rounded lower back. Um, again, from your hips to your shoulder is a little bit longer than normal, which isn't that big of a deal. You're just gonna have to adjust by hips a hair higher, which will allow you to flatten your back, and then get your body weight shifted backwards. Uh, falling back will allow you to get the tension in your hamstrings and glutes, and still hinge off those hips. Um, you're probably a pretty dang decent squatter. Looks like you got some little femurs uh, from your knee to your hip, it looks quite short. And so you kind of need to take advantage of that by pushing those hips back, getting more body weight behind the bar. Overall, uh, again, it's really, really solid. When I'm critiquing you guys, you know, generally speaking, all of your guys' forms pretty dang good, you know, 80 to 90% there. Uh, it's just the last couple tweaks along with getting stronger. Uh, you know, I think people um, get paralysis by analysis in many forms. Some people overanalyze their programming. Some people overanalyze uh, the weights that they are lifting. And some people overanalyze the technique that they're um, stuck with or wanting to fix and the truth is every session you go into uh, regardless of lift all three lifts bodybuilding powerlifting squat bench dead doesn't really matter we should constantly be focus focusing on a couple things we want to improve on our technique for that day or that month or that week or that block and also actually just getting stronger uh, because again there's more than just one way to get stronger being more efficient at your technique can help you get stronger in the long run allow you to handle more volume and lift the weight more efficiently but also just getting stronger building more muscle building those neural pathways to fire your muscles a little bit better can help overall here's another example of hips probably being too low as you can see once you start to yank on that bar there's no tension in the hamstrings or glutes and his hips are going to shoot up your hips the bar will move off the ground when your hips are in the proper position to pull. So, might as well try to find that proper position. And that's kind of why I have people set up from the top down. Um, what I would try to do here, my friend, is have your hips a hair higher at the start. And again, weight kind of falling backwards. Push those hips back. If you guys uh, need a visual example, go back to the video. Uh, uh, like literally four videos back, I start talking about deadlifts and people getting their weight behind the bar, not squatting it up. And I give a more visual uh, example of that. So, um, overall, your form is really good. Back's in a good position. Stance, uh, all that looks very solid, but I would start with your hips up a little bit higher. The issue, again, is that you're trying to squat the weight up, no tension in your hamstrings, using your quads to get the weight moving, and then kind of your hips find the place or their place. And then, and then, and then, and then your hips will move, finally being able to move the bar. Rather, we'd rather just have our, 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 our hips 
you know, hamstrings, glutes, low back, and quads all moving in unison to be the most efficient. If you guys like this series, be sure to smash the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. More raw gym footage of vlogs and teaching on the way. Salam, Mike, guys. I'm out of here. Appreciate you. <laughs>